Sanchez, we ready? Are we ready? Man, sit your ass down. I guess not. Psychology, we call it love for the aggressor, identity with the aggressor, where one loves the one that persecutes them you know, in an unhealthy sort of way. But this is a part of what Freud talked about when he talked about the Oedipus complex. That the, his, his theory is that the boy comes to be like his father. I ain't no black. Because the boy hates his father. And it's a very interesting kind of concept there. He wants to get rid of his father. Then how does he come to be like his father, we say? Because if he comes out and actually tells his father how much he hates him, the father might do what? Destroy him, you see? He's dependent upon his father. He needs his father. And that need and dependency, that fear that his father will hurt him or destroy him, the fact that he feels weak relative to his father, then sets him up to say, I can't express my hatred. I can't express my hostility. And, and yet this hostility is tearing me apart. This hatred is tearing me apart. How can I get rid of it? And he, uh, he gets rid of it by saying then, I'll do what my father says to. I'll be like my father. If I think the way my father thinks, if I behave the way my father behaves, if I look at the world the way my father looks at it, if I have the values that my father has, if I be as much like my father as possible, then I will escape my father's punishment and death. If I can show my father that I love him, that I'm the same as he, then, then my father will not victimize me. And it's a peculiar theory, but it has some interesting aspects about it. To a good extent, the relationship between African peoples and white people is a father-child relationship. We think of ourselves as weak, powerless against the white man. We see him as the source of gifts, the source of blessing. He gives us the jobs, he gives us the protection, he gives us the food, he provides the water, he provides the housing, he provides this, he provides that. You see? And we also think because we're weak, we cannot go directly against him to destroy him even though he hurts us, even though he degrades us, even though he frustrates us, even though he enslaves us and discriminates against us, we still don't quite get up the drive to say, well, I'm going to destroy this person who, who degrades me and who, who is destroying me because we feel as if we need him in some kind of way, that we can't live without him. He also tells us that you suffer because you have a different color. You suffer because you have a different kind of shaped nose. You suffer because you have a different hair. You suffer because you, you come from Africa. You suffer because you don't look like me. And what do we go for then? We say, well, if I want to get out of this suffering, then I should be as much like him as possible. As a matter of fact, if I get so much like him where he can't tell the difference between me and himself, he won't punish me anymore. I will no longer be, what, a victim. So therefore, we are motivated then to come outside of ourselves, to move toward the person that is destroying us and victimizing ourselves, hoping that if we can get them to love us, and if we can show them how much we love them, and if we show them how much alike we can be, we can get them to not see us as color. You know, look at me, don't look at me as a black person, look at me as a person, you know, to abstract us. In other words, in order for other people to love us, they must not see the blackness of our skins. They must see some kind of invisible abstraction before them. True love is a person who sees you for all of your blackness and your big lips and your big nose and you kick your head and still does what? loves you. If they got to remove your hair and they can't see you standing before them as a black person, they don't love you, ladies and gentlemen. For a person to say, I don't see you as black. How could you not see me as black? I'm standing right in front of you. But this is the kind of thing we want these people to do, to abstract who we are. 
And therefore, if we become a distraction, that means we leave who we are. We have to come outside of ourselves. I know That's why we want to be educated with them and educated like them and so forth. We want to, to not identify in any way with Africa, African people, because to identify with Africa and African people is to suffer. So consequently, we even come to hate ourselves and come to hate our people and come to love the people who destroy us, but it's an unhealthy kind of love. We come to resemble those people. We want to take their values and their orientations toward life. And when they accept us, we escape from our self-hatred. And therefore, we look as if we look for their love to take us outside of ourselves as a people. So consequently, even when we don't love them, when we love even within our own group, we still often look for a kind of love that will take us outside of ourselves, which means then that we become false and unreal and untrue and, and dishonest and deceptive, unknowing. And how can you develop then a beautiful household and beautiful children and a beautiful community with a love based on this kind of hatred?